This video talks about several different myths about people who have narcissistic personality disorder. Myth number one, every narcissist means to hurt people. I've talked about this before and I get asked this question a lot too. Do narcissists know that they're hurting people? Do they do this on purpose? And some people do carry the idea that all of our hurt and pain is done by this person on purpose. Now, I'll never say that it doesn't happen, but it's not all the time. Narcissistic personality disorder is an extremely selfish disorder. They're only really concerned with themselves, getting their needs and their wants met. And I've said for years now, the pain and suffering that we feel, that we end up enduring because of them, is really collateral damage. They need supply. They're going to do anything and everything to get it. This is why they lie, steal, cheat, so on and so forth. They'll do what they need to do in order to either hide what they're doing or defend themselves as well. It's all about them. Yes, they might call you names or do other things that seem very personal, but there's actually a reason for it. Things like yelling, screaming, name calling, even going silent and ghosting people causes us to back down, submit, leave them alone, or it might cause us to lash out and chase them. There is meaning behind everything that they're doing, and it's all really in the end for something that benefits them. Myth number two, every narcissist is extremely charismatic. Now, there are some narcs who just knock love bombing and things like that out of the park. They're very cool and smooth. They know what to say and do, and when to say and do it, they could sell fire to people sitting in hell. <laughs> and I ate up every bit of love bombing that I got, hook, line, and sinker. However, not every narcissist is created equal. There are some that are terrible love bombers. There are some that have no charm whatsoever, no charisma, no nothing at all. Some don't love bomb, and some of them are even boring, which I found out to be true once the love bombing that I received had faded. That was the really only part of anything that they were actually good at. There was no charm, no personality, very bland and very boring. A fair few can, of course, make that good first impression, but most of the time that fizzles out pretty quickly within the first few months. You hear the same things over and over. You realize how dull, boring, and narrow-minded they are, and it's really not that great at all. In a lot of cases, they might not even seem very appealing delightful or charming even in the beginning of the relationship. Most narcs become whiny little children as boring as all get out. That's just the way that they are. Not all of them are great love bombers. Not all of them are charming and charismatic and Mr. or Miss Wonderful. If you'd like to get some counseling or coaching one-on-one -on -one with me and have a safe place to vent to a fellow survivor, you can visit my site, jess-stanley.square.site. There's a link for you down in the description. If you want to schedule immediate or multiple sessions, you can send an email to book a chat with jess at gmail.com. Myth number three, every narcissist is just the expert at manipulation. Now that's not true. Narcissists cannot manipulate everybody and not all of them are just these masters of manipulation. A lot of them aren't even really good at it. <laughs> Narcs go after those who are overly kind and forgiving, people who are highly empathic and possibly codependent. In other words, those who are more willing to accept the behavior, instead of really being manipulated by it, they're just kind of accepting it. Narcissists are very immature and they have a stunted way of looking at things. It's a very childlike way that they behave. Like I've said before, a lot of what they actually do is trial and error, much like a child. They try tactic number one, it doesn't work, and they go, mm, okay, maybe I need to do this or maybe I need to do that to see what sticks and what doesn't. In a lot of cases, it's not all part of some master plan. They just kind of learn what works over time. Again, that's why so much of this is hard to pinpoint. Narcissism, first of all, runs on a spectrum. Secondly, someone's good at everything, everyone's good at something, while some people are terrible at all these things. There's also different types of manipulation, so there's an awful lot of variables here when we're talking about someone's specific situation. Some are great gaslighters, for example. Others are not. Some of them are great liars. Some of them are terrible at lying. And it works on some folks and on others not so much. A lot of this also has to do with us. 
those who have boundaries and standards and self-esteem are far less likely to be manipulated. And to be fair, narcissists usually don't stick around in those situations long and get rid of those people pretty quickly. Myth number four, every narcissist is super self-confident. I'll be honest, I have no idea where this myth really comes from, but it's really transparent that this fake superiority complex they have hides all the inferiority these people feel deep down underneath. No one who feels good about themselves and is truly self-confident and has good self-esteem needs to bully and act the way that these people do. Look at other healthy people in your life. They don't name call. They don't talk shit about other people. They're not trying to literally make everybody as miserable as they are. In fact, lots of people who are healthy and more well-regulated try to boost others up and they go the complete opposite way. Narcissists are selfish. Some of them gaslight. Some of them try to manipulate. They try to control, use scare tactics and threats when they're not completely ignoring you, of course. And it's just a nice way for them to behave, but it looks confident. They look cocky. They look arrogant. They look like they have it all together. But all of that, I guess, just really all kind of falls short on me because I can see how fake it really is. The way they act around other people or in groups of people at events out in the open is way different most of the time than the way they're going to behave alone with you behind closed doors. Once you see the day in, day out, you know how miserable, sad, pathetic, and scared they really are. So the superiority doesn't work on you. Do you know a myth about narcissism? I want you to share that with me now down in the comments. Myth number five, every narcissist is a cheater. Now, lots of narcs cheat, but then again, there are exceptions to all of these because of the spectrum that I just spoke about a minute ago. And there is also a difference between narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder. There are narcs and their primary sources are not actually their romantic partners. And so in a lot of instances, there isn't any cheating. There are narcs who use their parents for supply. They are terrible to their kids and use their kids for supply or their family, something to that effect. Some narcissists are in romantic relationships and have emotional online affairs while nothing is physical. And of course, vice versa. Now, there are some, like mine, who would be the vice versa, who wouldn't stop <laughs> cheating on me and had no morals, no values of any kind. But it's just simply not true in every single person who has the disorder. Again, some narcs are driven to do the physical, cheaty stuff. And that's how I'll word it for the sake of YouTube. And others, not so much. They like the attention they get from social media, but it never goes any further. Again, they go after their family, so on and so forth. It all depends on how they want to get their ego boosted, what they like, and what they want to do. Not every narc cheats. Not every cheater is narcissistic. Some people in this world are just shitty. I mean, I have to say what it is. They lie, they cheat, they steal. And honestly, they don't have MPD. They don't actually have the disorder. They might have some narky traits, but they're not a full-blown narcissist. Like I said earlier, there is a difference. And again, more honesty, we all have narky things about us. Some people are just toxic and don't have good coping mechanisms. They're not dealing with their trauma in a healthy way. But then again, there are some that have the full-blown diagnosable disorder. Not everyone is a narcissist, but it is a good idea to look out for the red flags of narcissism. Because honestly, they're just red flags of toxic behavior. We can take the word narcissist completely out of it. If a person is toxic, but perhaps they don't have enough signs to be diagnosed with the disorder, it doesn't mean all of a sudden that we would want this person in our life just because they wouldn't have the diagnosis. It's still awful, terrible, maladaptive, unacceptable behavior to deal with from others. Thanks so much for listening today. Let me know some things that are not myths about narcissists down in the comments. What do all of them do, despite all these myths and everything else floating around? Subscribe for more information on narcissistic abuse awareness and education every week. I also do live streams right here on my channel. It's a great community for support. I invite you to join me. I also answer questions as well. Have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.